Hey there, Supernatural Sammy here. Today, we're diving into the intriguing world of inventors who met mysterious and untimely ends. Throughout history, inventors have pushed the boundaries of innovation, bringing forth groundbreaking discoveries that shape our world. But what happens when their extraordinary lives take an unexpected and sinister turn? Our first story is about Stan Meyer. Stan Meyer's invention was like something out of a sci-fi movie. He used an electric water fuel cell to split any kind of water, even salt water, into its basic elements, hydrogen and oxygen. And it was easier than the traditional electrolysis method. There was quite a bit of skepticism around a car fueled by water, but Meyer didn't let that stop him. He patented his invention under Section 101 of the Subject Matter Eligibility Index. This meant that he had proven to a board of experts that his invention was not just a wild idea, but a reliable and functioning reality. Meyer's water-powered engine was the culmination of two decades of relentless research and dedication. He confidently claimed that he could convert ordinary top water into enough hydrogen fuel to drive his car from one end of the country to the other. Imagine a future where vehicles could be refueled with a simple garden hose, eliminating the need for fossil fuels and their harmful emissions. Cars alone release 333 million tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere annually, contributing to 20% of the world's total emissions. The reason why we haven't seen a widespread adoption of alternate fuel vehicles like the one Stan Meyer envisioned is most likely due to the petroleum industry, with its immersed wealth and influence has been a major roadblock. Exxon, the largest publicly traded oil and gas company in the world, reporting mind-boggling earnings of $75.61 billion in 2018 alone. These corporations not only possess significant political and economic power, but also possess the ability to sway public opinion. Critics argue that they actively suppress inventions that threaten their monopoly over fossil fuels. Sadly, Stan Meyer's story takes a dark turn. On the 21st of March, 1998, the first day of spring, Stan was having lunch with his brother and two potential investors at a Cracker Barrel. The four make a toast with cranberry juice. Stan takes a sip, suddenly gets up and runs into the parking lot, gagging and clutching his throat. His last words to his brother were, They poisoned me. Despite an investigation lasting three months, the official cause of death was attributed to a cerebral aneurysm. There were no drugs found in the tox screen that could have caused a poisoning. But Stan's brother Stephen remains convinced that he was murdered. Stan, before his untimely death, made some shocking claims. He said that he had been threatened by individuals associated with major oil companies who allegedly offered him a million dollars to destroy any evidence of his invention. However, Stan refused to comply with their demands, standing by his creation. Additionally, there were even rumors circulating that the Pentagon had shown interest in his remarkable invention. Curiously, just a week after his passing, the water fuel dune buggy that Stan had created was stolen. Opinions on Stan and his invention are divided. While many firmly believe in the authenticity and potential of his creation, others dismiss him as a con man arguing that there is no concrete proof that his car actually worked. It's a perplexing story, and the truth surrounding Stan's fate and the fate of his invention may forever remain a mystery. However, there are intriguing videos on YouTube that supposedly show Stan with the dune buggy and even demonstrate the vehicle in action. There are links to these videos in the description. The Hit and Run of Robert Leslie Berghoff 45-year-old Robert Leslie Berghoff worked at Baylor College. He worked in the molecular biology and microbiology department. He found himself thrust into the heart of danger on an otherwise ordinary day. As he leisurely walked towards his parked car on November 20th, a white cargo van abruptly swerved on the sidewalk, hitting Berghoff and killing him. Berghoff was a devoted father of three. He had been studying the infamous Norwalk virus which had been running rampant on cruise ships at the time. As the scene of the incident unfolded, it left behind an eerie trail of evidence. 
Meticulous examination revealed fragments of shattered glass that were linked to a Ford E-Series van, a model exclusively produced between 1997 and 2004. A witness came forward sharing their encounter. They said they saw a round emblem located below the van's license plate. Speculation arose suggesting a possible connection to a city institution. However, the investigation took an unexpected turn when no city-owned van matching the description showed any signs of damage, according to police investigator Ronnie Miller. Witnesses also mentioned that the van didn't have any side windows, but it did have two dark tinted windows in the back. The driver behind this tragic collision was described as a short Hispanic man in his 40s or 50s with a slightly round and unshaven face. At the time of Robert's death, Texas was in the middle of a huge flu outbreak. Robert was also an expert on gene mapping, leading some to believe that the hit and run was connected to his work. The driver of the van who killed Robert was never found, and the case remains a mystery. Our final story is the strange disappearance of Louis D. Prince. Louis D. Prince, often referred to as the father of cinematography, led a life filled with intrigue and mystery. Born in 1841 in Metz, France, Le Prince's fascinating journey took him from studying painting and chemistry to becoming an artist and inventor of the motion picture. Sadly, just when he was on the verge of unveiling his groundbreaking invention to the world, tragedy struck. Just a month before his grand reveal of his invention, he vanished without a trace. Le Prince was raised in a family with a remarkable blend of artistic and scientific talents. His father was a major in the French army and had a close friendship with Louis de Grey, the renowned inventor of the de Grey type portrait. It was de Grey who imparted his knowledge of photography and chemistry to the young Le Prince. Le Prince's thirst for knowledge led him to pursue painting and postgraduate studies in chemistry in Paris. Eventually, he settled in England, where he married Elizabeth Whitley, an accomplished artist. They established the Leeds Technical School of Art and were renowned for their innovative work in fixing colored photographs onto metal and pottery. In 1886, he created a remarkable 16-lens camera and successfully obtained patents in both America and Britain in 1888. In the same year, he built a single-lens camera in his Leeds workshop. It was with this camera that he filmed his groundbreaking motion pictures, including the famous Round Hay Garden scene and delightful sequences featuring his son playing the accordion. Le Prince's pioneering work predates those of Edison and the Lemire brothers by several years, solidifying his place as a true inventor in the early days of cinema. However, fate dealt a cruel blow to Le Prince's ambitions. In September 1890, just as he prepared to travel to the United States for a public premiere of his work, he mysteriously vanished. The last person to see him was his brother at the Dijon train station. There are a few theories explaining what happened to Le Prince. The most believed is that he was assassinated by Edison over a patent war. Another theory that emerged was that his family may have played a role in his disappearance because he was gay. But the patent war theory holds up better. Just eight months after his disappearance, Thomas Edison unveiled his groundbreaking invention, the cantithiograph to the world. Edison proudly proclaimed that his apparatus marked the birth of the moving image, capturing and reproducing pure motion like never before. Le Prince's wife Lizzie identified Edison's invention as the same one her husband had created and began a relentless legal battle against Edison, determined to unveil the truth. Over the course of seven years, Lizzie fought to sue Edison. Lizzie's unwavering determination paved the way for a momentous turning point. The truth began to emerge, revealing Le Prince as a true pioneer and inventor of moving images. And that wraps up our journey into the mysterious deaths of these brilliant inventors. I hope you found these stories as fascinating and perplexing as I did. It's hard to ignore the pattern that emerges when we connect the dots. I can't help but believe that these inventors weren't just victims of unfortunate circumstances. I believe they were targeted. Someone didn't want their groundbreaking inventions to see the light of day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.